Yom Tov! Good day! It's Friday, the 14th of September, 2018. Time for Stephen Brock to bring you a Messianic moment. Before that, of course, administrative stuff. New book, Parashot Drashim. My commentary on each one of these Torah readings is available now. Go to kickstarter.com, K-I-C-K-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com, one word, and look up either Parashot Drashim or search for Stephen Brock and you'll see it. Also, on the website, on the slider, at the, on the home page, or go to the tab that says books, come down to Parashot Drashim, you'll find links there to bring you. Please, go ahead, pledge on that campaign. You don't have to buy the book right away, but we have a lot of different deals and everything, and if you want, just pledge on the book. We have deals for getting two books, three books, PDF files. If you don't want to have a whole hardcover book, but you want to read it, you, for, I think, five bucks, you can get a PDF copy sent to you. Please go there and pledge. I've got about 23 days left on that campaign. I'm only halfway through my goal, so please go there. And if you just want to get it right away, you can't wait for it, which is good. You can always find it available on Amazon.com. Also, please go to the right side. If you haven't already subscribed, if you're on the video, the lower left hand, lower right hand corner, excuse me, click on the icon and subscribe there so that you'll get a notification every time I make a posting. If you're on the YouTube channel, please also go to the website and subscribe there, MessianicMoment.com. And uh, this way, you'll be notified in case I don't do a video. And as always, I love the fact that you're here. I really appreciate it. I hope this edifies. Please share me out. Help get the word out there. And if you want to make comments, I really do welcome them. Even if you disagree with me or you want to argue, we'll have a drosh on my drosh. That's fine. But as always, I ask, be nice. All right, so let's get into today's Parsha. We're almost done with the Torah. We're at like the very, very end of the Torah here. We're at the end of scroll. This light's really heavy. That side's really light. And God informs Moses he's about to die and has him bring Joshua before all Israel in front of the tent of meeting. Now God appears in a cloud above the tent. And Moses tells Joshua and the people that even though he is now going to die, God will still be with them. And Joshua will lead them over the Jordan into the promised land. God will be with them just as he has been in the past to defeat those peoples that are now in the land. So Joshua and all the people should not be afraid but have courage. Because even though Moses won't be with them, God always will be. He will never forsake them. God also tells Moses that in the future, the people will disown God and break his covenant and he will then hide his face from them. They will be ravaged by surrounding peoples and the country will be taken over. God tells Moses to write down a song, which I believe means that God dictated the song to Moses so that when this happens, the song will testify on God's behalf that it was the people who caused the Tzorus to come upon themselves. Now, you may ask why God, knowing all that is going to happen and the terrible things that his people will have to suffer through, would allow that to come about. I mean, after all, isn't God all-powerful? Isn't he all-knowing? Couldn't he easily make sure that people don't turn against him and suffer? I mean, doesn't he love them? Yes, he does love them. But he is God. He knows, unlike humans, that loving means to allow freedom of choice. He gives us free will so that we can choose to love him, which is the only real way to love, by choice. He never uses his punishment for disobedience as a means to force us to love him, but rather as a means to get us to return to his protection. We are protected by God when we are in his will, which means living in obedience to his commandments. Uh, God's all about love, but that doesn't mean he isn't about justice, fair judgment, and following the rules he establishes. Brothers and sisters, God is as subject to his commandments as we are. When he says we must do something, if we reject his words and ignore him, he must judge us as we deserve. He told us that the commandments he gave us are to be obeyed, quote unquote, throughout your generations. He says that often. And what that means is forever. Fortunately for us, God's judgments are filtered with mercy, still in all, 
They are terrible when we have forsaken him. The worst thing is that he just lets us do our own thing, which means we're then left to defend ourselves against the world with no divine help. Hey, people, that is a no-win situation. So look, if you find yourself in the midst of trouble, oh yeah, you can blame the enemy for attacking you, but unless you're doing something that is very, very godly, that probably isn't the real reason. The devil doesn't care about you unless you are doing something that furthers God's kingdom. So, back to your having all these troubles. What you should not do is look to God or look to the devil until after you have first looked in the mirror. I think that the majority of cases when we find ourselves in a teapot full of Taurus, the real reason is because of something that we have done or failed to do. God will always judge those who disobey him and do so with the intent to bring them back to his protective love and divine intervention in their life. God judges us constantly throughout our life in order to get us to change our ways when we walk away from him. He is patient and always will try to get us to protect ourselves by obeying his Torah. However, when we come before him at the final judgment, it will be too late to change. So make sure you get your head on straight before that time comes, which may be at any moment during your life. Hey, none of us knows how or when we are going to die. So we better be prepared to meet our maker every moment of every day. And that starts with doing teshuva, repentance, accepting Yeshua as your Messiah and asking forgiveness of your sins through his name. From that point on, you must try to live in accordance with the Torah God gave to all people, through the Jews to the nations. Hey, Jewish, Christian, Buddhist, whatever. God is the only God, and we are to worship him as he said we should. You've heard this before, you'll hear it again. God has no religion. He gave us his laws, commandments, and statutes so that everyone, everyone, would know what he expects of them. And he will judge you, not according to what a clerical leader has told you to do, but what he has told you to do. That's important to know. So, thanks again, and I appreciate you being here. Again, have a blessed and happy day. The key throat. We'll see you soon. Baruch Hashem.